So good to see everybody. So many too today. Wow. So yeah, my name is Noah Habib. I've met so many of you, if not here, um, online. <laughs> and I coordinate the Arc Immigration Clinic. And we started in May 2019, which means we're now at the point where we've spent more time online as a fully remote clinic than we did in person in the lower level of CBST. Uh, so on March 6th, we had our last clinic here, and by March 20th, we were already fully remote. So we've been doing this for a while. So we're a clinic that transcends borders. We have people, I myself was in Texas, in New Mexico, in Virginia, Rabbi James was in Connecticut. Our volunteers have come to us from West Virginia and California, and even a very devoted law student who was at home in Singapore waking up at 6 a.m. to be with us at 6 p.m. New York time for the clinic. So the world has clearly changed a lot since we started to do this work. Um, but in some ways for better, in some ways for worse, a lot is the same. Uh, which means I'm going to tell you some bad news and then some good news, okay? <laughs> so it is highest refugee Shabbat. I feel like it would be criminal not to tell you something about asylum and refugee policy as it is today and how it impacts the people we work with, our, our clinic friends. So there's three things I want to tell you. The first is about the refugee cap and refugee resettlement. Now, you might know that the Trump administration set a very low ceiling for refugees, only 15,000 every year. And the Biden administration has raised that to 62,500 after a lot of advocacy to, to have him do that. But sadly, in that first year, they've only actually resettled 11,000 people. So they're not making it anywhere near that high ceiling, which is even fewer than the year before. So we really have work to do in, in terms of refugee resettlement. The second thing I want to tell you is about the southern border. And you might have heard of something called Title 42, which is allegedly a public health uh, order, uh, yet no one at the CDC seems to see it that way. They think there's no public health rationale for it. And what it does is it prohibits asylum seekers from being able to come into the country during the COVID national emergency. Meanwhile, most of these ports of entry, which are among the busiest in the world, traffic, goods continue to flow, people continue to flow if they have the right documentation. Sadly, um, 1.6 million expulsions under this order have happened, and a million have happened under this current administration. So that's something we're really continuing to, to struggle with. And the final thing is immigration detention. And uh, of course, there was no humanitarian impulse in the Trump administration, in my opinion. Uh, but we did see the lowest levels of immigration detention because of COVID. And now it's going back up, 70% increase this past year. So more and more people are in these inhumane immigration detention uh, facilities across the country, simply because they're coming here uh, seeking refuge and asylum. So there are a lot of injustices that our friends face and the people like us who are accompanying them through it. And on top of that, we have COVID. Um, at the same time, we have been able to really expand what we're doing here the good work that we're doing, the sacred work that we're doing at CBST, even under these COVID restrictions. So when this pandemic started, we had a very limited staff. I was the only one, I was still part-time, and now we are about to have almost nine people, uh, when you include our amazing immigration attorneys, uh, Matt and Nathan, who are helping out with our superstars, Noemi, and Sebastian McGuire from SAFE. And, and we have Anna, our social work intern coordinator, and we've had four amazing social work interns, Maria, Muriel, uh, Leish, and Ricky. So uh, I also wanna say everyone here contributes, right? This isn't just me and Rabbi James, and I mean, it's of course, Gene and the development team and the board, Lee and Regina and everybody with our, our fundraising that makes all this possible. Chaz with our vaccine check system, keep everyone safe when we have people visiting. Uh, Asaf, Misha, Jorge, setting everything up, making sure we have the materials we need. So it really takes the entire community and then the more than 600 volunteers who we've trained, many of them uh, CBS team members. So before I turn it over to Dylan, uh, I just wanted to share with you some of the positive outcomes we've had. We've worked now with nearly 500 people in three years, and they've come to us from 50 different countries. 75% are LGBTQ. And to date, we've filed uh, over 100 applications for relief. 14 of those people who've come to the clinic have already been granted asylum. And some of them have done so 
uh, pro se, meaning without legal representation, just with our accompaniment through the process. Uh, and we've even, I think, thank you, Noemi, recently submitted our first green card application for, for, some, for one of our asylees. And we now have amazing volunteers like Azim, who's here tonight, and Adrian and Violet, who came to us as clinic friends and are now continuing to volunteer uh, and to extend a helping hand to those who are coming up behind them. So I'll just tell you one quick story, which is someone came in the other day and I said, to sign an application. I said, how is it going? How's the work with the team? In this case, he was working with two great Columbia law students. And he said, oh, it's so fun. I look forward to the meetings. It's so comfortable. Uh, which isn't usually what you'd think of when meeting with, you know, attorneys, a legal organization, um, talking about how you've been persecuted in your home country. He insisted, no, it's fun, and it's, it's great. I look forward to the meetings. <laughs> and I think, Dylan, you have a lot to do with creating that vibe that we have here and the work we do using a legal empowerment model. Um, so thank you, Dylan, who's going to tell us a little bit about our mutual aid work and some of our non-legal stuff. Uh, Dylan is really one of the architects of that, even riding your bike to Queens at the peak of the pandemic to deliver groceries to people. So uh, it's really amazing work that, that you've been spearheading. So final thing I'll say is volunteer with us, of course. I have to say you should volunteer with us. Many of you already do. You can email us after Shabbat at sanctuary at cbst.org, and we'll tell you exactly what you need to do uh, in order to volunteer with us. So I'll turn it over to you, Dylan. Hello, Shabbat Shalom. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for welcoming me to this evening's Refugee Shabbat. I'm Dylan, and I'm a proud CBST member and one of the leaders in our ARC Immigration Clinic. I'm very honored and very grateful to Rabbi James and to Noah for inviting me to speak tonight. And I'd just like to briefly share with you about the ARC's mutual aid services and how you can join us in giving critical aid to our immigrant friends. Our mutual aid efforts began immediately in March of 2020 as clinic volunteers and leaders recognized the isolation and the fear and the vulnerability of our immigrant community. These efforts began really simply. We made wellness calls in English, Spanish, and Russian asking friends about their needs and providing them with reliable information on the coronavirus. We instituted monthly community time meetings where friends and volunteers could begin clinic by listening to music and responding to a creative prompt. These prompts were usually dreamed up by our wonderful Azim, who's here tonight. <laughs> and this was just a great opportunity for everyone to come together for a little bit of respite and peace from some of the many plagues that were um, part of our first year in pandemic. Um, we quickly realized that food insecurity, lack of ability to purchase PPE, and increased dependence on technology were really weighing on our immigrant friends. With the generous and overwhelming support of Rabbi Kleinbaum, we began a cash mutual aid fund, distributing money to friends electronically or via the mail, or as Noah mentioned, hand delivered on bicycle by myself. <laughs> <laughs> took all day. It was one of my favorite days. <laughs> you might not know this, but asylum seekers are not eligible for employment authorization until at least six months after they've applied. And due to a lot of anti-immigrant policies, some asylum seekers are never eligible for their employment authorization while their application is pending. This fund is essential for meeting fundamental needs that our asylum seekers have while they're barred from legally working. With the support of CBST members to date, I'm very proud and excited to share with you all that we've distributed nearly $40,000 to more than 100 immigrant friends. So. <laughs> Noah, Rabbi James, and myself would really like to see these efforts continue beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. In one instance, fundamental needs were groceries for a family of three. In another, it was a basket of self-care and hygiene essentials after an immigrant friend suddenly lost a parent. I'm currently working with a friend who needs support in paying his phone bill. It's just $50 a month, 
And this friend with that phone bill taken care of is not only able to call into clinic every week to complete his asylum application, but he's also able to call home to his home country and his one-year-old daughter who he had to leave behind. Tomorrow morning, I'm accompanying that same friend, my friend, to his local food bank and to a grocery store because he's too nervous to go alone. Outside of cash mutual aid, we've expanded our resources, welcoming two more members to our legal team and three social work interns. We guide friends to resources for housing, health insurance, mental health support, and LGBTQ plus affirming religious communities in New York. We are doing everything that we can to welcome immigrant friends into a safe and loving environment with holistic aid. To continue, we need your help. In celebration of Refugee Shabbat, I'd like to invite you to join us in these efforts. First, if you find yourself with time to spend on Wednesday or Thursday evening, please join us virtually as a clinic volunteer. Secondly, and more urgently, please donate to our GoFundMe, which is now live, and which sustains our mutual aid fund and provides crucial aid to our immigrant friends. As I wrap up, I'd like to share with you um, a little bit more about me personally. Uh, I'm in the beginnings of my life in Judaism. I converted in the fall of 2019 as an individual. I do not have any Jewish blood relatives, nor was I or am I joining a Jewish family. I was simply seeking safe, supportive spiritual community. The gifts of time, food, clothing, resources, and money by CBST's members that I've already witnessed really confirm for me that CBST is the empathetic and dedicated spiritual home that I was searching for. Even in times of isolation, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I was the only person on a bicycle or in a grocery store or on the other end of a phone, I knew that I wasn't working alone. I felt the strength and the support of CBST's members who had already given of themselves. Please, I invite you to join them. I encourage you to come on board the ARC with the special gift of your time and a life-saving donation to our GoFundMe. Thank you for celebrating Refugee Shabbat with me.